Last wipe, I made 100 mil in the first week of the wipe, and then went on to make a billion rubles. This wipe, I did the same. I made 107 mil in the first five days of the wipe. And in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how I did it. Covering my first day strategy for unlocking the flea market, my looting strategy, the loadouts that, that I used, you know, progressively um, from, the, from the first day to the fifth day, and exactly where I looted. This wipe, I only took 229 raids, whereas last wipe it was 247. My survival rate decreased actually, even though I was more efficient at 79% survival rate instead of 87%. I got one more PMC kill and I completed the challenge in four less hours. I made 107.5 million rubles up from 103 and my average rubles per hour was 1.58 million up from 1.43. I did barely any quests like just a few ground zero quests and Jaeger quests mostly to get me to flea market quickly. Upgraded my hideout a little bit only when the items were cheap which mostly they weren't and here are my skills. My strategy for unlocking the flea market was to initially make a make a small bank. So, I, so right from my first trade, I'd actually run streets, make a few mil. Then there was actually a, new, a bunch of new quests on Ground Zero that you know is a new map that we had to do in order to unlock other quests. So, what was really important is that I got my green flare from Jaeger to improve my speed for looting on streets. So, I had to go to Ground Zero, complete a bunch of those quests to unlock Gunsmith Part One which would then give me introduction with Jaeger, go to woods, get that done, go back to streets, make some more money. But then as soon as I got acquaintance done with Jaeger, then that unlocked a bunch more quests, which gave me XP. And especially Taco Shooter 1, 2, and 3 were crucial for giving me a bunch of XP to unlock Flea. Um, I didn't do it that fast. Like you don't, I, I don't prioritize unlocking Flea Market that quickly because uh, one wipe, I did it in like five or six hours. And there was no one flea. Like there was no one, there was no point. There was no one buying my stuff. There was no one to sell to. Um, there was nothing to buy. So in my opinion, as long as you do it by the end of the second day of wipe, then then you're fine. Like then you can take advantage of selling things pretty expensively. But me, I took me about near the end of the first day. So I think I was playing for like 12 or so hours. And, and I had vended about nine mil worth of stuff. I don't really save much, many, many things for flea market um, just because of the space issue. So I just save like corrugated hoses, tool sets and a couple of other things. But, but really you want to don't waste time min maxing your stash too much because time spent min maxing your stash to make money on a flea market is also costing you money because it's costing you time going into your next raid, collecting more loot. So there's a balance there. Definitely save some stuff for flea market, but then, you know, don't spend like two hours in your stash min maxing um, rather than, you know, because that's an, an additional two, hour, two hours worth of runs. But yeah, yeah, just, just think about it. My overall looting strategy is to only play solo. Um, I find teammates will slow you down. Like generally it it is, I find it more difficult to, to make money um, with teammates. Like you have to, you have to cover more area, you have to get more loot and you risk, you know, getting into more fights. But obviously it does depend on your teammate. Maybe you have an amazing teammate to run with, but in my case, solo is way, way, way easier. I definitely don't do any scav runs because I um, would rather just like keep getting XP on my PMC and, you know, keep leveling up endurance and strength, etc., which will, you know, help in the long run, make me more money. I generally just focus on mid to low tier loot and just pick up like everything over like four to five K per slot. Because for me, what I found most effective is just short, quick runs. Short, quick runs, filling up the bag, filling up the rig and getting out and avoiding hotspots. Like just surviving and getting a high survival rate is much more effective than risking it for a little bit of extra loot from a hotspot. So I'm generally just, just playing it safe, getting that high survival rate, getting in, getting out. I'm trying to get out in like under 10 minutes, if not under even like seven or eight, but yeah, un like 10 minutes. If you're going over 10 minutes for like early wipe money making, then you're probably doing something wrong, especially on Streets of Taco where the extra are so close and there's just an amazing amount of loot. I like to stay low weight until I'm closer to extract because like when you're, when you're heavier, um, you're going to be much louder for, it's going to be much easier for other people to hear you and camp 
and set up or track you down, you're going to have much more inertia applied to your to your character. So you're going to be a lot slower. If you need to PvP, it's going to be hard to you know rotate around or get get behind cover, and you're going to lose stamina a lot uh, a lot quicker. So you're just going to be slower overall. So it will, if I know that in my route I have to go through a big open area, a risky area, then I'd prefer to be underweight, under that yellow mark of weight until I'm through that area, then fill up and get to extract. My PvP strategy for you know for early white for this for this run for this challenge is 80% of the time, lo loosely 80% of the time to disengage and play it safe and get some money elsewhere and, you know, uh, get to extract a different via a different route and 20% push. But it really depends on if I'm at a clear advantage in positioning. Like if I have, if it's close range, I have cover and I have a right hand, say, then I'm just going to push and kill them. Um, but if I know, if I have to push out in the open, and I know that they have cover or they're in a they're in a dark spot of the map, they're hard to see, and I'm say having to push out into a street light, then um then there's no, then there's no way that I'm that I'm gonna push. Um or if they know what the kit is, say say I've heard a Mosin or a pistol, or say I've spotted them peeking and they're just like naked with a pistol or, or something, then you know, we just push and kill them. Um and obviously it depends on how many there are, the more there are, the less likely I am going to push. And all this depends on me actually getting warning of people in front of me. Most of my PvP is um, them taking me by surprise. So generally, I don't have a choice. But if I do have a choice, if I do hear someone 80% disengage, 20% push. And um, yeah, just, just while we're focusing on the rubling, we're focusing on high survivor rate. And unfortunately... There isn't much profit to be made by actually killing someone. You're most likely going to spend more on more on ammo, more on meds than you are going to make from you know selling their stuff. A quick note on selling and how to sell early white briefly. I vended pretty much everything except for a few items, as I mentioned before. I vended about nine mil worth of items before getting the flea market, and then once I got flea, I undercut everyone by at least twenty percent. And this was mostly just to spend less time in stash because, you know, time spent in stash is time not spent looting in the next raid. And also to get flea market rep quickly, because we start at the moment, we start with two slots, which is really annoying. And getting that third slot nice and quick really helps out with, you know, selling, selling things on flea market. It's especially important as there are so many items, early wipe, especially hider items that are crazy expensive. So being able to flee those quickly and efficiently is extremely valuable for making money. For loadouts, I began with just running a AKS-74U and the biggest bag I could buy from Fence, plus a packer. I'd be looting scabs as much as I could to find a bigger rig or a bag and, you know, save those. Then from level 14, I ran a G36 from Peacekeeper, because I'd have Peacekeeper level 2 then, and you could buy a day pack. I'd still be on the packer at that point. Then from 17 plus, I would run the Val with a mechanism and an LBT rig inside the mechanism for those extra slots, and then wearing an azimuth rig. Plus, for my armor, I was running a Kurasa. Now, with the Kurasa, you have a few choices. We have the, the new armor system. I, If you linked search the Kurasa on Flea Market and you scroll through, you'll be able to see that there are some options for lower weight tier three and tier four armor plate. If they're a decent price, I highly recommend buying them because it means that you can go into ra into raid uh, lower weight and then pick up, you know, more loot in, in raid. So whenever I could, I would run low weight tier four, but sometimes they're very expensive. So yeah, just whatever you can get, lower weight is better. The BTR is also absolutely amazing for making a little bit of extra money per raid if you happen to find it. The Initially, you can send two by five slots of loot back, and then once you get max scav rep, you can send four by six slots worth of loot back to your sash and the items will still be found in raid. So I highly recommend working on your scav rep throughout the weapon and maxing that out as soon as you can. This map is an overview of what areas I'm going to be covering in this guide. In blue means I'm going to be covering it and in yellow I won't be covering it. The, the complete map will be in the description if you want to have a look at it. Yeah, so I'd like to explain why I'm not covering certain areas so that if you do, you know, want to loot there, then I guess you can make that choice, but it'll be an, an, an informed choice. So to start with, the Cardinal Complex area, like this whole area, 
is um there, there isn't enough loot density basically you have to run too far in order to get loot compared to a lot of other areas where like see the mini mall you have much greater loot density so it's just much more worth your time to be looting you know to, to be looting other places uh like there there are safes um and things in here but uh and like like a lot of containers suitcases doorboxes etc but you just have to run so far it's just not worth your time with the one exception being this safe right here uh which i'll show and i only loot that if i'm spawning spawning in this area and planning on running through here and then looting many more um so and then that's a cardinal area next up down here there's a little spawn with a dead scav and there's a couple of nice gold spawns here but the main problem with this area is that the audio is very very buggy so you know many many of these doorways cut off audio completely where you know you could be sitting inside here and then someone sprinting someone sprints up and you don't hear them at all they peek they open the door and you die so yeah until that's fixed i like there is nice loot in here but it's not worth the risk for me to be hanging out there now on to these areas this is the some people call this a mailroom post office or Bromoski and chikanya right here and lexus these are the three main hotspots of streets and there is a lot of nice loot here but it's only worth it if you can maintain your survivor rate like i have a much higher survivor rate when i'm looting looting um these external areas and that translates to a much higher rubles per hour compared to if i was you know hitting these hotspots and you know potentially getting more loot but it is much more difficult to actually survive because you're going to have to you're going to run into a lot more players and yeah so if you're only concerned about rubles per hour then do not do not hit these areas uh unless your raids are like completely completely dead like you're playing at 3 a.m or something and there's no one no one around um there isn't much loot around here but what there are is a bunch of scavs so especially especially in like this area this area it's very open and it's easy for scavs to just snipe you just like regular scavs to snipe you through a bunch of bushes generally a bad place to be not too much loot around here that i've seen and um yeah generally all around bad place to be um so that's that's here that and that lexus um now here briefly we'll talk about the two marked rooms so here is check 13 but check 13 there and we have a banner factory um, about there. Whoops, there. Now, last wipe, I was making a profit from these two keys, but only like 100 to 200k per use. And it took like it took a lot of time to actually get to the valuable loot. So the problem is, is that you'd go in right, and the the loot that you're looking for that you, actually gives you the profit are things like containers like ammo cases, docks cases, um, key card cases, stuff like that, or key tools. But where that spawns, also a lot of guns and armor and like tra tra basically trash loot that you don't want to pull out also spawn. So what you're having to do is every time you hit it, you have to pick up these things, dump them elsewhere so that you can actually really carefully scour uh, for the high value loot. So this ended up costing me like 30, 30, 40 seconds per, per run to to actually get in there and clear it out. And it's just not worth the time for the for the profit that I was getting. Just not worth the time. But generally, every wipe, someone makes a video like I hit check 13 10 times and here's what I got. I hit the banner factory 10 times. Here's what I got. So watch out for those videos and see if the, you know, the loot has been buffed or nerfed. Um, BSG typically does like to buff and nerf marked rooms occasionally and as for the rest of this area there's like bag filler loot but the problem is it's not worth your time to run all the way in here and then you have to run all the way out because you can easily fill your bag in other spots so it's just it's just not worth the the amount of time running running in running out and potentially getting camped you know if someone wants to camp camp you here um if someone sees you run in or hears you then it's it's quite tricky to get out. Now, 
onto ah onto collapsed crane area. There's a lot of toolboxes here, a lot of uh, awesome duffels and grenade boxes, but it's very 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 open. So like you you could be looting around here, and scavs or players can just run up without giving you audio. Like they'll be they'll be they'll be too far away to give you audio, and they'll just shoot you while you're while you're running around. Um, and while while you're you know while you're looting a box. So the only time I would loot this is maybe at the very start of a raid, or at the very end if I felt extremely safe maybe. But I've had just many bad experiences of looting and then just randomly getting shot and uh, getting no audio when there are so many other better options of, you know, where to loot. And that is it for where I am not covering and why. So briefly on where should you loot depending on your spawn. So this is a common question. Where, where do I loot depending on, you know, where I spawn? Essentially, what you want to do is loot closer to your extract. Like, Head to your closest extract and loot along the way. So, easiest examples are say, if you spawn up here, I would loot through the mini mall and get our clean off. Um, if you spawn, and same, same for actually, if you spawn all the way up here, all of these, loot the mini mall, get our clean off. And if you spawn here, you have a choice. You could, you could go up to the mini mall. Get our claim of, or you know you could. Um, and this is a run I very often do go through astronaut, and I'm not sure what to call this one, but it has a bunch of filing cabinets and stuff, and then head down, you know, head down to um to crash site because you'll have crash site extract. Go through Concordia, get our crash site, um, and obviously hit more if you have a bigger bag, hit more of these areas, and. Then if you have um so and 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 like any of these spawns as well, you just loop through mini mall and then dip back out of Klimov. Um anywhere around Pinewood, anyway, so or any of these spawns, any of these spawns, if you have like until you get like a couch bag and a couple of rigs, then you'll be able to fill up just by starting on, you know, this side, like and going through going through Pinewood. Um and that'll be plenty. And if you have a little bit more space, you could always go across the road, hit Beluga, and go like partially loot mini mall and get our claim of. Just depends on how big your bag is. But yeah, these spawns generally hit by and would get out claim of. Uh, for abandoned factory for for here and here, as well as here, I'll generally generally loot. Um, like the factory area, factory area, um, yeah, there's, there's so many, so, so, so many places, and then just get our claim of. We'll touch on MVD as well, that, like, optionally you can, instead of going this way, you could go around by MVD, a little bit safer, rather than being out in the open here. And, uh, and real estate, there's a spawn in real estate. And I'm not sure what to call this, but right here as well. Um, generally, I'll just be looting factory area and getting out sewer. So if you spawn, if I spawn pretty much anywhere around here, I'll actually skip Concordia and then just run, run to factory zone and get out either damaged house or sewer. Because the main problem being is that if you loot Concordia, right? If you spawn here and you loot Concordia, then you're going to be overweight during this really risky cross. Like you could you could play a little bit more safer and go down here, but this adds so much time to your run. Even if you were to go down here, like all of this is just a bad area to cross. So I love being over, uh, underweight, and which means you're faster, um, you're quieter, and you have less inertia. So yeah, pretty much if I spawn here, I ignore Concordia, run over. Uh, I'm generally only lo looting Con Concordia if I have crash site extract. So yeah, that's uh, that's most of the spawns. There's a couple of funky ones, like like here and here. 
bit and here actually um well this one this one actually i'll go and loot uh head to concordia and loot crash site go down here concordia and then out crash site but you don't have that option with these two spawns here so generally i think what i do is i run back actually loot here and hit golden world and then actually just run under do a little bit of mini mall and get acclaim off and this is still a pretty quick run even though it looks like it's a long way it's still like a sub 10 minute, 10 minute run to loot to fill up your bank rig this spawn i kind of do the same thing i just i just run back out and follow the same route same for this spawn i'll just like run through hit mini mall or yeah or pinewood you can loot pinewood as well and um and get out and that is about it oh for this spawn i'll um i'll just i'll just run out and uh usually hit usually hit uh concordia and and then go out crash site so in general in general go to your nearest extract and loot along the way and try to be underweight for the, as much of the run as you can um and you know definitely like switch up where you're going depending on what you hear in the raid like if you hear five men in front of you um then that's going to impact you know where where you run during that during that raid so don't they, they don't take this as a hard set rule actually use use your head a little bit during each raid and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about different routes or different spawns that i haven't covered i think i've covered everything though you don't need any keys for to make money on streets there's so 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 much loot but if you do have these keys then you know you can get a little bit of a little bit more value per slot um but really really don't feel like you have to get literally any of these keys there's just crazy crazy amount of loot but we'll quickly go over the keys that i do run and so starting starting down here with concordia concordia apartment 64 64 office so the office is inside apartment 64 so there's no point in having the office without um concordia 64 concordia 63 and so these are all these are all uh, right, right here in that in that section. And then on the other section is we have Concordia Apartment Eight and Apartment Eight Cinema. Then Concordia Thirty Four, and down in the basement is Concordia Security. All these are really nice. I'll go through them when I'm actually uh, showing you where the loot is. And store managers is pretty nice. Just just for the one safe in there. A couple of other containers, but that's right here. And relaxation. Oh, sorry. Real estate has yeah. It's it's also it's, it's over here, top floor, right here. Pretty nice, but only if you know, only if you're if you if you spawn near there. And then relaxation is over here. Uh, the doorway is like right here. And we have financial institution small on the first floor, and then the regular financial institution on the second floor. On the second floor there. And then going up is Beluga, which is top floor, top floor here. Beluga, really nice key. Oh, and MVD, which is here, first floor, uh, actually about there. First floor, you go in. MVD is nice. Negotiation, finally negotiation over here, which is a little room here. Um, inside the BSG headquarters. Okay, this is the beginning of the northeast route at the top of the uh, mini mall mini mall quadrant going to here go up here jacket usually there's some sort of barter item there um toolbox something in there and to check up here like for barter items toolbox random barter items on the ground i think some food sometimes up there uh valuable up there and i've got the moonshine somewhere around here also just check down there for barter items tech spawns barter items all along here I sometimes Tetris, sometimes GPU, and I've gotten like money there once, but just check down here and check on the bed. Um, I feel like I've gotten something good one time, but not too often. And anyway, we'll go back out to the stairs, go up a floor, and I'd like to open these two. Then, then check up here for gold, for valuable swans, and all along the ground for like barter items, tech spawns. Stuff like that and on the ground here i've gotten i think police or kajura up here and something here 
um, like just a barter item probably. Food, all around here, and think on the ground. Anyway, that's it for, for there, we'll go out. Just as you're running out, be careful of other spawns coming in from over there because um, this is a this is like a, a, a dead end area. That's the only way people can come in and out. Um, check the desks or like bar items. Sometimes, sometimes stems, sometimes valuables. They're like things can be hidden underneath this paper and all along here, all along here. Usually, usually it's garbage, but occasionally it's a nice stem or valuable. Just along here. Um, and like right there, and along here and here. And all along along the edges here, I've gotten valuables, bad items. Um, yeah, just all along the edges. And finally, right here, I feel like I've gotten paper or food or something like that. And you can just vault over this. can vault here. Now, you can vault through this, but I'll just show you, and I, and I have been preferring to vault through that, but I'll just show you the loot that you would be skipping. Um, and I'll show you why I like to skip it as well. So in, if you come in here, there's a um, filing cabinet and it's a bar item that spawned there, and a duffel that spawns there. Then if you go up, dead body here. Now, I think it is better to skip those areas because, um, and I think there's a duffel or toolbox somewhere around here that, that can spawn. Because if you come up here and want to get, get into that restaurant in Tabaluga, you have to breach this and that alerts everyone in this area where you are. Whereas if you go down, and um, the vault, it's much quieter. So, uh, go back this way. So yeah, you can just vault straight through this. Very quiet, and you don't alert everyone in this whole area, you know, where you are. Duffel can spawn there. There's some more containers over there, but usually I just run up. We'll hit the top first. And like food and drink all along these tables. This is Beluga. So, um, uh, this key, Beluga key here. This is one way to get in. And also you can get in this side. So whatever side you pick, just make sure you're clearing it because unless you've made sure that the other door is locked because someone could be, someone could be in here and just camping it. Um, so valuables and meds and stuff all along the table here. Intel, I think here-ish. Just make sure you're mousing over it and collecting any white dots. on the, the chairs as well. And very often a Bitcoin or, or something valuable can be hidden under the, the paper there. Um, valuable spawn like there, there. Intel on there. And also valuable spawn right there. And just like food and stuff on these tables. And we have... Duffel, two jackets, dead scav. Then you get like vodka and stuff along along here and along the shelf on the uh, rack. And a duffel can spawn there. Now we'll go down. Food and drink and stuff. If you're like if you're desperate, just check check around all the edges. Um not too important. Uh, so you can open this up or you can go out and come back in. Um, anyway, so I like to go up this side and gold spawn, valuable spawn right there. And uh, and there. And I think it's about there and there-ish. But just, just mouse over the whole thing and look for a white dot. Then we can go out here. You can actually just vault this and they'll also vault this. You have to break the window here. I like to go down first and come back up, but up to you. Dead scav. Just check, like, 
just check along the ground as you're coming through here. Sometimes I've gotten stims and golden stars and stuff. And like gold spawns, like very rarely I've gotten like a loot lord or, or something around here. Dead scav. And I also have a quick look around here. I've gotten like a tetris here before. But I just have a little, little look then go back upstairs. And same for here, like meds can spawn here, but very rarely. And also here. Toolbox. And another toolbox there, and also like barter items around. And I've gotten a gold spawn there, like one time. Something on the table, and also barter items back here. And then we have meds um, up here. I've heard that there can be a gold spawn in there, but I've never gotten it myself. And uh, one time I did get like a Kudra or a Cloth or something on these shelves, but very rarely. Definitely something underneath this uh, bit of paper, like a barter item. And um, toolbox here, and barter items can spawn around it. Dead scav you can loot. Um, loose barter items there. And like a toolbox or a duffel around the edges. Toolbox. I like to go down. You can go out there, but down this way is more loot. Dead scav, duffel, loose, like barter items. I think another toolbox or a duffel around here, and then duffel here. Duffel right here. Toolbox spawns here. Barter items along the shelves. Nice tech crate. More barter items down there. Jacket, toolbox, barter items can spawn around here. Tech crate, all the more bar items, and a duffel can spawn there. And we have a duffel spawn here, two filing cabinets, and some loose loot can spawn there. Then you can just vault over this. That no, please. Vault. Let me vault. Game. Please. Thank you. And we have a tech crate, tech crate, and a toolbox there. And also loose things can spawn there. Toolbox at the end here. Loose barter items along the ground and on the shelf. And I think like a few random things spawn in there, but not, yeah, not a big deal. Rusted bloody key can spawn hanging up here. Toolbox and also things uh, along along the side here. Um, there are two duffels in there, but this is like plenty of loot anyway. PC. And sometimes something can spawn along there. I think meds. And then I'm going to come over here, check for a scav, snap a scav, wait for a signal flare area to pop up, pop the flare. And then if you still need more loot, there's one dead scav here. Over here, there. And, and there, and that is it for the pine wood, uh, oh no, for the, for the mini mall, for the mini mall route. Um, then all you do is just run out to clean off. For the pine wood route, this is the Sparja, uh, that's the central area of the map, over there is Lexus, and where I like to start pine wood route, ideally, is from this entrance, Sparja. Pinewood. We have duffel here. Another duffel there. Toolbox and loose bar items around. Loose bar items, toolbox, dead scav. You can, if you really want more loot, you can go down. Um, and get suitcase and two more duffels, duffel, duffel. But usually I, I skip I skip that because there's just so much loot. There's so 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 much. Anyway, we go back up here. So we came from over there. We come up here. Um, suitcase, suitcase, and like loose 
random barter items around. Um, toolbox. Med bag, dead scav. Uh, loose medical loot on the tables and on the ground. Like stim, salewa, ankle, stuff like that. Duffel. Duffel. Toolbox. Duffel there. Dead scav. There is a little bit of loot in these side rooms. Um, but like it's very it's really not worth. It's not worth the time to go in there, except for this one where you can get a, a suitcase. Suitcase spawn there and like loose spawns around here and, and like on the ground. Not so long here. And Dead Scav. Random battle items. It's one there. Barter items all along the shelves and on the ground here. Now, usually, this is where I go down and get out. So this will lead us down to... And, oh, and there's, like, gold spawn, valuable spawns. Oh, rarely valuable spawns around here. Usually, I get out, get out, clean off. But if you want more, if you have, like, a big bag of couch with a bunch of rigs in it, then that's where I'd head this way and uh, loot a little bit of um, the mini, mini mall route. So we go down here. You can loot all these side rooms, suitcase, some loose items here. And I think sometimes there and there. Sometimes meds, either like in these bathrooms along the um on the counters. Very rarely though. And in here. Dead scav. Um, but yeah, honestly, like this is not really worth hitting. Duffel. Um Oh yeah, and we have like both of these can be opened now. Open that. Just loose items, duffel, duffel there. And in here. But yeah, yeah, not not too much. Just check along the sides here if you need, if you really need it. And we have you can get meds and sims in the bathroom. Some loose items here. I've got like an even opt out there before. Run down. I've gotten loose spot items in these rubbish piles before. We have gold spawns uh, on along the ground at the back here and on top, but rarely. So like, just go in, quick glance, get out. Two more filing cabinets over there. And we have meds and stims and stuff all along the shelves. Here, here, there, all along here. And all along here. Oh, and uh, not sure about that actually, but here, up there. Oh, and some random items. I think med items uh, on the on these couches. And I don't usually and and so from here, if you need more loot, then you can go via the underground and go into Beluga and you know carry on through the mini mall route to get to Klimov. Um, but. But yeah, that's only if you have a big room, big uh, a lot of room in your bag. I don't usually hit the restaurant area. There's not too much there, and it's very easy for like a snap a scab to get a weird angle on you through multiple bits of glass, and just just kill you. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend looting through here. And and uh, whenever you're done with pine wood, just get out clean up like this. A cash can spawn here. Cash can spawn here. And then, um, I've already used my flare, but you just wait for the signal flare zone around here, aim about here, and then it will go fairly, um, fairly high. And then again, like we mentioned in the, in the mini mall route, there's a four scav bodies you can loot. One, two, three, and the one over there. And then just run over there to get out. That is it for the pine wood route. Definitely you don't want to loot everything that I'm going to cover in the factory area, but you just want to... Follow a pick a route um, that makes sense depending on your extract. So, like, if you're going to going to head to Damage House, then you might like focus more along this right side or the, or the south side. Or if you're going to end up at Sewer, 
So you might want to cut more to the left, to the north. But I'm going to show you everything that there is that I think is is worth looting in the factory area, and then you can make up your mind on uh, what what you want to loot. So starting with here, we've got a food crate over there. You can just vault into this window. This is near the swipe. Um, there's a med med crate there. Uh, random bar items there. Med bag. I'm gonna check up here for like med spawns and random barter items. Um, med bag and med bag. And now all these shelves, you definitely want to check for like stims and like golden stars, stuff like that, painkillers. Really, really nice. Also here and on there and up here. I've, I've even got like a book and some random gold spawns up there. So definitely really nice, worth checking. Come through here, we've got a duffel and dead PMC. We'll just dip back here and then come back. If you need food, another food, another food crate down here, and random food spawns um, on this on this uh, shelf counter top. I like to I like to run this way. Um, you can go go over there first, but I like to come here. And I like to loot this container from outside the window because you can you can loot it, crouch, and then you're pretty well covered if anyone is coming from from this direction compared to if you're looting on this side, you know you're you're very exposed. So tech crate there, well like bar items, tech crate, um, another crate, tech, tech crate, loose bar items, all along the ground here, and another one over here. Always, 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 always loot the bottom one first before this one because you can be looting this someone can be running up and you'll only hear them about here um, at the moment so yeah don't ask me how I know I definitely haven't died to that many 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 times okay bad items all around here and there here there on the ground we have march room down there but um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't hit that. And fire items down here and here. Along the ground here and along the ground there. And now we'll go back this way. So this is where we ran in. That's where we ran in from the, uh, from the, um, pharmacy kind of area. Ran in there. Coming back this way, we have a med crate here, and also more filing cabinets. And then come around here. And three filing cabinets, fourth filing cabinet, PC, PC, random items spawning up here. And here, and there. Then we have a duffel over here. Duffel. Sometimes food spawns around here. And now we'll get out. That's a cinema. Now. Now we'll cover this little restaurant and then go back into that quadrant. This restaurant is pretty nice for just duffels and food spawns. Duffel, um, weapon crate. And like all along these tables, you can get food spawns. So if you're really if you're low on food and water, just come in here, top up, duffel. Um, they're pretty sneaky how they hide the, the food spawns. Just, yeah. Just check all through, duffel. Duffel, and through here, another duffel. So you can really just top up your bag if you're, if you're lacking. And check all these tables. Another duffel over there. And uh, I forget what's behind here, but yeah, just have, have a look. Um, and yeah, so that little, little top-up restaurant there. Then, since I'll go back this way, because this is usually the, the way that I'm approaching it. So, this is the factory's area, right? And, coming around here. I'll start with start with here first. 
two suitcase. You have to close this one first to loot it, and then you can then you can loot it. Suitcase, uh, suitcase spawns here, and uh, like food and food and stuff spawns on these on these um tables. Then we go up here, and toolbox, toolbox, random barter items along the ground, along the top, and around here. And we'll we'll loop back around. We'll loop back around. Yeah. Something can spawn there, like barter items. I think I've heard a gold swan can spawn here, but I've never gotten it. Duffel, duffel, weapon crate, tech crate, and gold spawns behind here. Now, yeah, we'll cross and then we'll come back safe very risky to hit this is relaxation this is um this key very risky to hit very exposed but delicious very good loot moonshines on all these types of tables and gold swans on every sofa basically um duffel so like check all of these moonshines and vodkas and stuff and all of these sofas another duffel for gold swans and also down here, all these tables, all the sofas, stuff all, all like you wanna you you really wanna mouse over it all. See ah, it's a good example. Nice. So see you actually have to mouse over it to to find the loot. So that could have been a Bitcoin as well. You actually gotta jump up and sort of yeah, go over it. It's kind of yeah, kind of annoying, but gold swans. Check the tables and then and then jump up and yeah, mouse over it because the loot can be hidden not much in an offline raid but yeah that's that's offline raids then we'll go into this is Alkatochka. uh i think i'm saying that right and uh start with the first floor i've got like diaries and bar items and stuff there and all, all on the ground on these shelves Two filing cabinets, food spawns. We've got the occasional moonshine here, but just check all the um, shelves for food and all on the ground. Um, random barter items all along here, and like tech tech items. I think like gold spawns around here. Just just check all along the ground on here, tech items, barter items, and like food is scattered. It's it's a big mix of items. Just check here along the shelves um on the bed in here all on here and like yeah diaries and all sorts of stuff just give it a quick look um check here here there and i think there and sometimes there there's um bad items and stuff i don't think there's anything in there toolbox and some stuff some uh, bar items and stuff, food and stuff up there. We've got a mini duffel here, bar items all around here, and then you've got meds spawn down here, up there, along here, and then bar items all along here and food. Now here, you, I think I've got a gold spawn, definitely on the table, definitely in ah uh, yeah on the on the sofa, and then stims occasionally around here. But just check check there on the tongue on the table. Both of those and along the ground here for meds, med bag, um, and food or something there. Let me pop that so I get rid of the tunnel vision. And I've gotten gotten stims and stuff all along the ground here and up there. So definitely worth checking that. And that is it for Alkatochka. Now what we'll do is cross back. This is where you need to go for broadcast part three. I've heard of people getting moonshines in the shelves here. You can definitely get vodkas and stuff and whiskey, but I've never gotten a moonshine myself. Um, like all, along all these shelves in the back here. In the crate here, weapons crate. I have gotten a gold spawn, uh, I think it was around there, but like 
it's such a long way to run just for one gold spawn. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really get much up here. So honestly, for me, I just skip this area. But let me know if you, if you guys find anything nice. Food crate over there. Now this is the quest. This is the building you need to go for the audit quest. I actually don't loot here anymore. Uh, but there is, I'll show you where the loot is, and I'll explain why I don't loot here anymore. Um, gold spawns and barter items around here. Duffel. Door box. Jacket. I think there's usually two, no, one jacket. Yeah, one jacket. And tool box. Now this is the financial institution key small. Um, this one. Right there. Got a uh, safe, two PCs, three filing cabinets. Pretty nice. And go up. Get like food spawns, random food spawns around here. I've gotten a gold spawn on the table and in there before, but generally just food spawns and like random barter items. This is the, um, oh, I still haven't done the order quest. That's the order quest location, duffel. And this is the regular finance. So. Financial Institution Office Key. Gold spawns all along the ground here and here. You've got to mouse over it, otherwise, you know, you can miss stuff. Then a bunch of PCs and, like, random items can spawn on the tables, like sugar and stuff. Bunch of PCs, usually a duffel there-ish. But yeah, now, so the reason why I don't loot this anymore is because there's only one way in or out of the top floor. So many, many, many times I've had squads um, hear me in here and they'll, they'll just camp. Like they'll set up, set one guy up here. They'll set one guy up watching the stairs like this. And it's just really, really difficult to push out because you don't know, you know, who's going to peek when. And so it just becomes a waiting game because if they push up, they're pushing up into a bad, bad spot. Where they have to clear, you know, left and right at the same time. Whereas if I'm pushing down, then I have to clear many, many angles at the same time. So it's kind of a stalemate. So yeah, I, I don't loot this, but if you want to risk it, go for it. Jackets. I think ammo crate. Random barter items down here and down there. And med bag, jacket, filing cabinet. Tech crate and duffel up here. And then we can get another duffel spawn right there. And go to jacket here. And all along here can be food. And oh, here ish, uh, it's mostly meds. Um, but pretty rare to get to get meds there. So yeah, food if you're low on food and water, just come up here, have a look around. And that is all I wanted to cover for the factories area, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So from here, what I would do usually is, uh, yeah, if you have damaged house, get a damage or sewer. But if you don't have either of those, then just cross into Pinewood and, you know, go through the Pinewood route that I have uh, covered in this video. Then get out, clean off. Okay, this is cinema. We're on courtyard side of cinema. There's not too much here, just more like bag filler loot. And uh, except for like one gold spawn, which I'll show you. But there's duffel here. And you can get gold. There are gold spawns uh, behind here, med bag, and I think along the ground here, but I'm not sure. And the, the crate there. Then we'll go up. Um, usually there are toolboxes, uh, like around here, I think one or two, and toolbox here, one more over there, there, and like random barter items, I think can spawn along, along the ground, I think I've seen them, two toolboxes here, then if you 
if you really want to, you can go up all these stairs. Toolbox. Then, um... I think, I think I just get like a duffel or so here. A duffel. This is now back to the front med, med bag. And over here is generally just duffel, so... One, two, three, four duffels and a toolbox back here. Weapon crate as well. Okay, that was weird. And then a few crates down there, but not really worth hitting. And then down here, actually, because generally if I'm hitting this, then I'm just filling my bag a little bit before getting out of damage house. So... There's a little bit more loot down here. You have to go in from the outside. Dead scav, duffel, and duffel spawns over there. Um, then yeah, then just get out. Or if you don't have damaged house, then continue on the factory route and get out the sewer or clean off. This is a new area called the real estate. Uh, what has the real estate key, so I guess it's could be just called the real estate offices or something. And there's car extract up there and cinema there. So we'll go in. Duffel. Random barter items. I found like random barter items and even like a I like I found something good along the table. Let's just check the table here. Duffel. Duffel. Duffel, three filing cabinets. Duffel. Um, check all the tables for like random barter items. And not many of these PCs can be looted. I think there was like one. Um, anyway, duffel there. I thought there was one PC you could actually loot, but maybe not. And this is the real, the, the real estate key. So, where is it? Ah, here it is. Real estate agency office room key. Probably going to be needed for a quest. I found at least like multiple gold spawns uh, along these tables here. And so you want to check here and check on the tables there. And um, that is it for real estate. Really? Yeah, pretty small room, but definitely worth checking if you're, if you're, you know, if you spawn here, you can spawn here or if you spawn nearby and then head to like the factory zone, get out damage house or sewer or clean mob. Okay, this is the um, chat Skya side. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but kind of like the middle west quadrant of the map. And yeah, starting with Golden World. Down all the way down there is Klimov Extract. This is the Cardinal Apartment Complex. Over there is Beluga. And this is Golden World. So all along here are gold spawns. Let's check all along here. All along here. And also all along the ground as well. Here, all along the ground, here, 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 on the ground, up here. But like, yeah, all just, all just like valuable spawns. And then we'll run over here to, um, uh, over here. I don't, I don't know what to call this building, but like, that's Astronaut, where Rusted Key is. And, yeah, this is to the, to the, uh, East, East Astronaut, I don't know, Green. Green building? Go with green building. Green building. Three filing cabinets. Duffel. Toolbox. Loose. Bad items. And usually like food. Um, PC. 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 Four PCs. Dead scab. I've gotten defib. Got a Lettix here once. Uh, meds. Meds. But meds all around there. And then usually I just run out. But we'll go to astronaut now. PC, dead scav. All the way up there is the rest of the bloody uh, key. We keep going up the stairs. Here we have funding cabinet, PC. Toolbox at the end there, duffel here. 
I've gotten gold spawns along the top here, but very rarely. Two PCs and filing cabinet. Um, PC, duffel, and duffel. That we don't have a key for yet. Not in the game, or yeah, I don't know. Um, filing cabinet. I feel like I can get a duffel there. I think I'm wrong. Safe that we can actually loot. And PC. And just random bad items and food and stuff along the table. And that is, this is astronaut because there is a um, astronaut fellow. I'll show you. On the wall. Over here. Right there. And now we'll go to museum, then hit school, and then VSG HQ. So this is museum. Gold spawns all along here. Duffel, gold spawns, gold spawns. Along here, and like ammo on the ground, but not really worth. Toolbox, cup here, two jackets, gold spawns along here, and like on the bed. And here, here, gold spawns, gold spawns, there, there, up here. Random food, there's a Florida CPSU 2, I think, item there. And that is it for museum. Then we'll go to school. School. There's nothing amazing in school, but it's a bag filler. Like there's lots and lots of um, duffels and med bags. So and it's very very safe to loot. Like no one no one comes here. So generally I just hit um, down here. I'm gonna hit school. Med med uh, box. Med box. And like one can spawn around here and there, like I think up to four or five can spawn in this room, med, uh, med bags that is. So pretty nice, pretty nice for, for meds. Then we go up here. Uh, yeah, food, random, random items. Uh, I think I've gotten meds up here one time. In here, this room isn't great, it looks like it should be good, but there's a gold spawn there and I think up on these tables, but like it's really rare, wouldn't bother hitting it, and we can't loot the safe yet. But eventually this room should be good, because it's like it's a secret room, right? You'd think it would be buffed. You'd think it'd be worth hitting, but no. A um, lot of duffels here, usually here, here, all along here. Duffel. Uh, usually a duffel all along those tables. PC. Usually, yeah, usually a duffel somewhere around here. And um, duffel, and this is a nice way out. You just run down, jump off this, and get out. Or you could have gotten out there, which is where the med bags were. X ray, that's X ray, it's not really good. Not much loot. Also, all over there is not much loot. There is check 13 down there, but as I've discussed earlier, I don't find it worth hitting at the moment. Although it could be buffed at some point. This is the BSG offices or HQ or negotiation room, whatever you want to call it. New this way. We go in here. I don't think I know every relaxation key spawn. That's this is where the building where this key can spawn. But I'll show you what I what I know, and then I'll just put um, a like relaxation key spawn guide in the description. Um, but yeah, duffel. Got food and bad items. Another duffel. And, oh, one relaxation key spawn is there, another is there, and, like, this is actually, and another duffel, that safe can't be looted. All these tables can, like, even spawn nice bad items, like a Tetris, um, and, and, yeah. So, so definitely worth checking weapon crates, definitely worth checking all the tables, um, toolbox. Now, this is negotiation key. This is actually nice. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Negotiation room key. Here I've gotten up to three gold spawns all along the ground here and one like 
in the mattress here, and then just random barter items on the top, and med bag and PC. Um, you can get like random barter items spawning on the ground here. Check all these tables, all the tables for food, barter items, stuff like that. Another duffel. Just be careful in this whole area. Scavs can shoot. Can, they, they'll aggro on you and uh, through the window and shoot your legs out um, through all these windows. There's a little, little gap, which is pretty annoying. But you just want to mouse over all these tables. All the tables. Um, yeah, toolbox. And here. I think... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a relaxation room key spawn right, right in the door. In the skull. And duffel there. And yeah, check all these tables, all these tables, the toolbox. Oh, and I think it, I think there, I've gotten relaxation key. It's either that magazine or a magazine that that's identical to that, but spawning somewhere else. Um, and definitely I've gotten it uh, there, the relaxation key. Another duffel. Toolbox, and you can get the key right here, and also right where, like right poking out the back of the pizza box. Um, and yeah, toolbox, and that is it for BSG offices, BSG HQ, negotiation room, whatever you want to call it. Okay, for the four Concordia, where that's Lexus over there, and down all the way down there is crash site. First up, coming in here. Is a bunch of med spawn, stim spawn, stuff like that. And there are a bunch more duffels, like two or three more duffels if you go in, but really it's not worth the time unless you're like desperate for food and water. But anyway, we'll come through here. And duffel. Toolbox, toolbox, barter items up there. Toolbox, random barter items up here, and I think down there. Toolbox and barter items up there. Um, I've got random items up here, like food and water. Yeah, you can see fleece. Just be careful of these windows, especially later into the white, um, as there, as like Lexus becomes a lot more popping, and you can get shot through these windows. I found that out last white. Yeah, it's not fun. Anyway, uh, you can get valuable swans, gold swans here, here, and there. Um, just food and stuff. I Like, whenever there's food around here, there's also a low chance for a moonshine. So just keep an eye out. Um, gold swan down there. And I think stim or gold swan hidden in there. And I think I just checked there and there, but I don't think I get anything good. And the PC. Usually from here I run all the way down because crossing out in the open is death. Never a good idea. And we got toolbox here and like bad items. We've gotten Tetris quite a few times uh, on the ground there. I like to hug this side because um, if there's someone in uh, security, then it's harder for them to hear me approaching. And then I like to peek here and see if security room is open. And we'll hit. We'll come back uh, come back later and hit security. Oh. Uh, now we'll hit security now. We'll hit security now. To toolbox, toolbox, bot items. Um, purple suitcase. And a weapon case. Oh, black weapon case, I think. Back there, yep. Toolbox, and now this is Concordia security. Uh, security. Computer room key. Right here. So we've got safe. We've got um, weapon parts down there. Two PCs. Check check up here. Like suppressors are really nice weapon parts. And mags and stuff here, here, there, up there. All along there. Just very carefully check it all. Um, you can get quite a lot of nice, nice expensive parts. Now we go up to Concordia. 
uh, 64 first. There's a gold swan underneath there. We'll go all the way up. Oh, actually, we'll just go through here first. This is where you need to go for a delicious sausage. Bunch of food and stuff around here. Um, I've heard you can get gold swans in here, but I've never gotten them myself. And also along the side here. Um, but yeah, I may be just really unlucky or they don't spawn at all. But yeah, like food and stuff. If you really need it. And we'll go up. Now this is Concordia 64, uh, this one, Concordia Apartment 64 key. And this is Concordia Apartment 64 office room key, right here. So there are gold swans all along the ground here, and all along here, and down here. I think on the bed, I'm not sure, but just check the sides as well. And now into the office. I think I've gotten bar items up here. Definitely along here. Along here, there, and down here. And one PC. Whoops. Um like food and bar items there. I check here. I forget what I got in here, but I always check there for some reason. Um definitely in here I've got a nice sink like stims and valuables. And in the suitcase. And I'm not sure if there's anything else that can spawn on the table. Just food, food and stuff, and bar items all along here. Now this is Concordia 63. Apartment 63 room key. Really, really nice room. Check all along here, all along here for valuables, tech spawns, stuff like that. Stims, gold spawns, um, all along here. And this is more like med stims. Just very carefully check along the ground. And on the uh, on the shelving and like especially on that on that chair as well. Now you can go back normally or you can break um, break the window and just jump through. Um, usually there's a suitcase there, a purple suitcase. But anyway, this is we're heading to 34 now. And usually there are nice tech bar items down here, sometimes up here, and sometimes on this table. And duffel there, and like food, occasional food spawns along here. We're gonna get out, this is 34, we're gonna get out this way, so we first clear over here. Clear like this. And then start with, um, this is, uh, cinema. Concordia Apartment 8 Home Room cine Cinema Key. Check there, gold swans, nice Bitcoin, all along here. Tech up, like tech spawns and stuff here, here, and uh, over there. This is um, apartment 8. Concordia apartment 8 room key. This is not as good, that's way better. But still, you want to quickly scan around here for gold spawns. All along here, chair, there, along this table, and on this couch. Um, just give a quick check. Now this is 34. Uh, 34. Concordia, Concordia apartment 34 room key. You want to check in here for like stims, something nice, uh, food up here, bar items, text ones on the chair as well, um, all along here, all on the ground here, gold spawn stims, and I think just food and stuff around here. And then this window is kind of tricky. Um, what you got to do if you don't want to break your legs, you don't have to actually, you don't have to shoot that. But what you got to do is um. We want to run out and then land on that fence thingy and then the car if we don't want to break our legs. Even if you do break your legs, it's fine because you should have crash sight if you're extracting, if you're looting Concordia and you just run out to the right and it's okay. But we'll try, we'll try running out and doing the, doing the jump. Can I, yeah. So easy to get stuck on this damn window. Ah, okay. We didn't do it right, but ideally you land on that thing. And, oh, we already hit. Um, security. So yeah, we just ran out here to to crash site. Um, now there is, if you really wanted it, there 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 is uh, some more duffels and stuff along the ground here. 
But honestly, it's not really worth it. Med bag, it's nice. Honestly, it's not... Like, you should be able to fill up without it anyway. Um, but yeah, duffel. Just get our crash site and be happy. Okay, this is Sparja near construction. And there's just generally, like, uh, some food spawns along the shelves here. Duffel, weapon crate. This is where you need to go for delicious sausage and over there for broadcast part 2. And there are toolboxes. Um, like, I think there, there, a bunch of toolboxes. Yeah, there, I think, uh, there and one there. Weapon crate, weapon crate. But where I actually like to loot if I have the time is up here. I've gotten some good things there and in there. I like, I like book, food and stuff, but nothing amazing. This is the, um... Where are you? Store manager's key. No one ever really hits this. And here we have a safe that we can hit. PC, duffel, uh, duffel, filing cabinets. But you just gotta be careful. Like, I only really loot the safe here because um, looting sounds are really loud. Very, very, very loud. So anyone running through here, they'll, they'll know that you're up here looting and they can even get an angle on you. Like, yeah, very, very easy to get an angle on you if you're looting filing cabinets. Usually I just loot the safe, run down, and then keep heading on to Concordia. So here is an expansion this way, uh, that sewer extract, and we're gonna go into MVD. My favorite part about this expansion is that if you're like full of loot after looting the factory area, you no longer have to go through a really exposed area um, around that corner. So you can just go through here and it is much, much, much safer, way safer. So there is a lot of random loot around the place that you can fill your bag with, but mostly the only place that I like to check is in here like there are there are like duffels and stuff and med bags around but uh this is the um mvd key which is here mvd uh, academy entrance hall key um open this up and i've got at least three different gold spawns in here like all along the ground and i've got duffel and a dead scab just like yeah just want to look all all along the ground here and um and yeah, keep going, keep going. And then just, uh, just it's just to top up your bag a little bit as you get out towards, as you, like as you're on your way to clean up extract, which you can get out uh, via this exit. So you go out here and then boom, you have clean up. Super, super nice, nice bag filler.